Hi everybody, I told you there were too many amazing books coming out in the month of October that I had to do two videos. So here is part two of the books coming out in 2019, October. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Happy Monday, happy October 14th, I think. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week and everything is going really, really well. As I said in my previous video, which I was talking about the books coming out this month, there are just too many amazing books coming out in October that I had to separate it into two videos. Weirdly enough, I have books in my stack that are coming out on October 15th and books that are coming out on October 29th. I don't have anything in my stacks coming out on October 22nd, which just goes to show you that these are only the books that have been kindly sent to me by publishers. Sometimes I have to go out and find other books, buy books, because I love to do it, and I have to get them myself. They'll be in other videos as I pick them up, but this video is going to have some amazing titles in it. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, get out however you keep track of your TBR. As always, if you are so able, please order these from your local independent bookstore and or have your library pre-order them for you so you can get them as soon as possible. So we're going to be starting with October 15th and we're gonna be starting with one of my most anticipated YA books that is coming out that is the first, I believe, in a series, and that is War Girls by Tochi Owenbuchi. I don't know if I'm saying that exactly right, so I apologize there. And this is coming out from Razor Bill Books, and I think this is sounds, I'm gonna use a curse word here, guys. I think this sounds kick-ass. There you go. The year is 2172. Climate change and nuclear disaster have rendered much of Earth unlivable. Only the lucky ones have escaped to space colonies in the sky. In a war-torn Nigeria, battles are fought using flying deadly mechs and soldiers are outfitted with bionic limbs and artificial organs meant to protect them from the harsh, radiation-heavy climate. Across the nation, as the years-long civil wars raise on, survival becomes the only way of life. Two sisters, Oni and Ifi, dream of more. Their lives have been marked by violence and political unrest. Still, they dream of peace, of hope, and of a future together. And they're willing to fight an entire war to get there. I think that sounds great. I love a sister story. Absolutely love a sister story. I think that this is going to be super fun. And I am on board for War Girls by Tochi Owen Bucci. I want to thank Razor Bill so much for sending me this copy. This comes out on October 5th. Okay, the next book is a literary superstar. Thrice, yes, three times nominated for the Booker Prize. Yet to win, but I don't think it is too far in her future. That is the amazing Deborah Levy, and this is her new book out from Bloomsbury called The Man Who Saw everything. I want to thank Bloomsbury. They sent me this beautiful finished copy. This was long listed for the National Book Award um, Prize uh, for 2019. So yeah, um, I often find that you have to leave Deborah Levy up to them to explain it to you because her books have a slight complication that that don't warrant very easily being uh, put into a synopsis. So it is 1988 and Sal Alder, a narcissistic young historian, has been invited to the communist East Berlin to do research. In exchange, he must publish a favorable essay about the German Democratic Republic. As a gift for his translator sister, a Beatles fanatic, Sal's girlfriend will shoot a photograph of him standing in the crosswalk of Abbey Road, an homage to the famous al album cover. As he waits for her to arrive, he is grazed by an oncoming car, which changes the trajectory of his life. The Man Who Saw Everything is about the difficulty of seeing ourselves and others clearly. Um, one, this cover just, it's so, I don't know if he's in pain or if he's in ecstasy, if he's just exhausted. I find it so titillating. I do. And that is The Man Who Saw Everything by Deborah Levy out from Bloomsbury. So thank you again so much. I'm so excited for this one. 
The next book in this uh, that I'm going to tell you about is The Dollmaker by Nita Allen. I want to thank Other Press for sending this one to me. This is the story of two people that have um, very unique hobbies. Now, Andrew, he makes exquisite dolls in the finest antique style, as it says on the back. And they are small, like him. So I'm assuming he's a, a, like a short man or something, but graceful and they're unique and they're beautiful. They're beautiful, beautiful dolls. But this and his love of this is sort of em empowers him to answer a personal ad in a collector's magazine um, that he uh, gets. And that is, starts a conversation letter by letter with Bramble Winters, who is also a little bit off the beaten path. And she lives in an institution on Bodmin Moor. And she is there because of terrible events from her past. And as they start, so as he starts to journey towards her, and he reads fair about, let's see, on his journey through the old towns of England, he reads the fairy tales of Awa Chaplin, potent elderich stories that, like her lifelike dolls, pluck at the edge of reality and thread their way into his mind. When Andrew and Bramber meet at last, they will have a choice to remain alone with their painful pasts or break free, unlike their dolls, come to life. So that's The Dollmaker by Nina Allen. Next in this is a book out from Grey Wolf Press. I just love Grey Wolf. They are just amazing. And they send me the best stuff. And this is Suicide Woods by Benjamin Percy. This is a so short story collection. And from what I know about it, it's like crime, horror, and weird happenings that occur in the forest. That's sort of your ongoing theme throughout the short stories. Doesn't this sound like the perfect October book? I don't know much more about it. I think you're going to be a little bit creeped out, a little bit weirded out, a little bit on edge, but I think that's exactly what we like about a really good book. So this is Suicide Woods by Benjamin Percy, and this is out from Grey Wolf Press. Okay, two more on October 15th, and this is it, uh, it Would Be Night in Caracas by Karina Sanz Borges. This is out from Harper um, Via, which is their new um, imprint where they are doing translated works. And this is translated, oh, hold on one second, uh, from the Spanish by Elizabeth Beyer, Breyer. There you go. What do I know about this? This is this, this is set in Venezuela and it's set in a modern Venezuela, which as you guys probably know, is a country in utter and utter turmoil in so many ways. Run more or less by a dictator, awful things continue to happen. But our main character is grieving the loss of her mother and dealing with that loss when she uh, has to uh, bar herself into our mother's old house because of people who are looting around her. And she finds that as she's in the home and she is barred in and all this chaos is happening outside, she is now remembering what it was like, her life with her mother. So I have a feeling that this book is going to be sort of a juxtaposition between the softness of a love of a daughter for her mother and the chaos that is the Venez current Venezuelan uh, political system. I think that's going to be a really interesting mix. I know a lot of people who have read this in the original Spanish and really, really enjoyed it. So I'm excited for it. This is not the finished cover. I'll hold the finished cover up there for you guys so you can get to take a look at it. And that's If... Um, I'm sorry, It Would Be Night in Caracas by Karina Sanz Borgo, translated from the Spanish by Elizabeth Breyer. I think that sounds up a lot of our alleys, don't you think? Us as readers, you're, you guys, we're the same in a lot of ways, and I think that book sounds like an us book, as does this book, because I think I cannot wait. And that is Celestial Bodies by Joka Alaharthi. Translated from the Arabic by Marilyn Booth. This was the winner of the Man Booker International Prize last year. This is the first book translated um, into English by a woman from Omani. And she won the Man Booker International Prize for it. So, good on ya. Um, this is set in a small town in Oman. 
Um, and it's the town of Al Awafi. I'm sorry if I say that wrong. But this is the story of three sisters who are all dealing with the idea of getting married or the men that they love from three different angles, very different, complicated angles. The old um, Maya is married, uh, who marries after heartbreak. There's Asma, who is, wants a different type of marriage and a different type of life. And then there's one da uh, sister, Ka Kawala, Kawala, who chooses to refuse all offers because she is waiting for the man that she loves to return to her. So I have heard nothing but great things about this book. I'm holding it a little bit too far away, but um, I really am very, very excited. I want to thank Catapult Press for sending me this. I just love them too. I love all of these small independent publishers and big publishers and everybody that sends me books. They're so nice to me. And this is Celestial Bodies by Joka. Alaharthi, translated from the Arabic by Marilyn Booth. This is a big one, guys. You're going to want to get your hands on this. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be talking about it. Okay, so I said I don't have anything in my stacks that are coming out on October 22nd, and I have three books that are coming out on October 29th, and one of them I don't know a ton about. This is the book, one of the books that was handed to me while I was at Book Expo America, and um, it is out from Kanaf, and it looks like a um, YA title, I do believe, and that's Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. Now, as I was reading for this video, I was like, this book sounds pretty pretty darn good. So Simone Garcia Hampton is starting over at a new school and this time things will be different. She's making real friends, making a name for herself as student director of Rent. Love any book where someone is putting on a production of Rent. Love that play. Reminds me of my youth. Um, and making googly eyes at Miles, the guy who makes her feel like she's the most important person in the world. The last thing she wants is for a word to get out that she's HIV positive because last time the backlash nearly crushed her. When Simone and Milan start dating for real, she's introduced to a whole new world of longing. As sex becomes more and more a possibility, Simone knows she has to tell him she's positive, but she's terrified of how he'll react. Then she finds an anonymous note in her locker, one that threatens to expose her if she doesn't break up with Miles. I think this is a unique tale on um, a young girl who's dealing with something completely different, but is probably really real to a lot of young children um, more in this time period, in the time period where this book came out. I have, this is a great story. I think this is going to be really good. So that's Full Disclosure, out from Kanaf by Cameron Garrett. And again, October 29th. Okay, this may be one of the memoirs that was most talked about next to um, Saeed Jones, whose book is also coming out this month. And that is Ordinary Girls by Yakira Diaz. And this is coming out from Atria Books. Now, I got to hear her speak. I should probably make sure. Let me see. I want to make sure I'm using the right pronouns. Yes, so it says she in the bio. So um, I heard her speak at Book Expo America and read part of this, and it was fantastic. It is gritty and dark. This is about growing up Latina. This is about growing up queer. This is growing up in a tough neighborhood. There is a real rough and um, uh, like sort of uh, gritty quality to the writing when she read it. It's got a real voice to it. Um, I really, and this is a memoir. I should, I said that, I think. And that is Ordinary Girls by Yakira Diaz. And I think that you guys, if you are into memoirs, if she's coming to your part of the town, you should definitely go see her. She adds such a power to her own book if you hear her read her own story. So again, this is out from Atria Books, October 29th, Ordinary Girls, Yakira Diaz. Last but certainly not least is a book about food. And that is The Chefy by Marie Nadaye. Nadaye, I'm gonna hold that up there just because I don't know if I'm saying it right. I think this is so clever as a cover. This is coming out from Kanaf, and this is translated from the French by Jordan Stump. And um, let me see. So she, I guess, is pretty well known and a great a uh, big prize winner there in France. And I think this is the first book I've seen translated into English, but don't, don't uh, quote me on that. Um, born into poverty in southwestern France, as a teenager, the chefie takes a job working for a wealthy couple at a neighborhood town. It does not take long before it becomes clear that she has an unusual, remarkable talent for cooking. 
This book is going to make me hungry. She dreams in recipes. She's always imagining food combinations. She hunts down elusive flavors. And soon her sheer talent and ambition puts her in the charge of her own kitchen. Though she revels in the culinary spotlight, the chefie remains very secretive about the rest of her life. She becomes pregnant, but will not reveal her daughter's father. She shares nothing of her feelings or emotions. And when the demands of her work become too great, she leaves her baby in the care of her family and sets out to open her own restaurant, which will soon win rave reviews. As time goes on though, the chefie's relationship with her daughter remains fraught, and eventually it threatens to destroy everything that she's spent perfecting her life. Told from the perspective of Sheffy's former assistant and unrequited lover, this stunning new novel by Maria Nade is a, gu a gustatory tour de force. I've never heard that word before. So that is Sheffy by Na um, Maria Nadai, translated from the French by Jordan Stump out from Knopf. So that is another big, delicious pile of books. I hope they all made it onto your TBR. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, please check out my other videos. I really, really appreciate you coming by for this one. Please subscribe if you so desire. As always, until next time, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy reading. Bye.